Hello. Um, all right. So here I am doing another video. I, uh, okay. So what's, what I feel like what's happening too is like, so I'm talking about things that some of them I, I'm afraid to talk about and, um, but you know, it would seem that it would just be best not to talk about these things. Um, but that's the Holy Spirit is, is telling me that that's how he wants me to uh, grow my faith and I'm, I'm supposed to not be afraid and to, and to trust him and um, so it's really all about growing my faith and, and trusting that he's got my back and, um, and my eyes are just watering. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I have like an allergy thing going on. Um, so anyway, um, so I'm going to I'm going to, you know, and, and I, and I shouldn't be afraid because he's shown me time and time again that, that he's protecting me and, um, you know, he'll, he'll set a standard against them if they, you know, if, if any, any, uh, evil forces, you know, <laughs> you know, he, he was, when what I understand that means to mean is that he'll, he'll, he'll send a warning. I mean, he, he's protecting me. He lets, he has ways of letting evil forces know, like, so. Anyway, I, I trust in that, and um, I don't under, have to understand. I don't have to lean on my own understanding. I just have to um, to trust him, and you know he'll direct my steps. And um, so that's what's going on. Okay, so I, I trust God, and He's the Almighty, and so nothing, you know, no weapon form, formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Okay, so but anyway, um, so I'm going to go ahead, and you know, because I brought it up before. And so now I'm going to, I kind of gathered some info together and, um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about, uh, my, uh, my cousin or great cousin or how, whatever. Um, his name is, uh, George B. Cordelieu. And, uh, so he was, um, secretary of treasury under, um, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. And actually he was in the cabinet he's he was like i guess kind of like a deep state guy if you know what like what people call deep state these days because um he was in several uh cabinet positions and through like like four presidents okay so like i can't find that paper now about that but it's not it's not important that's really not important um but what i i thought was you know so when i was doing some research about my my cousin um, and I found this, um, a, a, a quote by him that I thought, well, that's, that's good to know that he seemed to, you know, I don't know, seemed to care about things. So, um, so he said, uh, there was reason for Stillman's extreme secrecy. He was preparing to extend the city banks power, which is what we know of as Citibank with an I, C-I-T-I -I bank, bank, all one word, Citibank. Um, but it used to be called Citibank, two separate words and spelled, you know, city the, with a Y at the end. But anyway, um, so there was reason for Stillman's extreme, and Stillman was the president of Citibank at the time. Uh, so there was reason for Stillman's extreme secrecy. He was preparing to extend the Citibank's power over the earth and fully recognize that this ambition would draw him into the web of international commercial intrigue and espionage. Okay. There's, there, there's that, okay. That's what he said, all right. And then um, I'll just show a picture this is him. Okay, cousin George there, um, and then um, some interesting pictures of. There's there's one with him at a table. Um, right here, you can see there's Teddy Roosevelt, and that's him, George Corley. And this right here, I found out is. Um, uh, Charles Bonaparte, Bonaparte, who is um, the uh, the grandson of 
Napoleon Bonaparte's um, youngest brother. Okay. And, um, and then so I found um, a, a, you know, in the uh, um, American, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the Britannica, um, what do you call it, the, um, yeah, anyway, it's, it's the Britannica, um, whatever you call that. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm so, I'm really tired and I barely made it out here today. Um, and I don't know how much light I have, but well, hopefully I'll have enough light. Um, so James Stillman, it says, uh, Stillman succeeded Taylor's son-in-law as president. So he's president, he was president of National City Bank. Okay, then by maintaining large cash reserves and drawing on powerful connections, such as his close friend, close friend, William Rockefeller, Stillman's bank prospered during the panic of 1893, more than doubling deposits and rising to a commanding position among U.S. banks. And it goes on to talk about exactly how much money he ended up making off all that. And then, um, and then I, you know, I, I found something about um, Napoleon Bonaparte and his connection with the Freemasons and, you know, all that. So anyway, there's a Freemasonic connection there. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll, whatever, you know, believe it or don't. <laughs> so, um, just, you know, by the way, that's all. Um, and then what I thought was really interesting. So I just, this was something that I just happened to come across recently. Not when I was looking for my cousin's information. It was before that I started looking into that, um, this time. I mean, I've looked into him a long time ago, but then just here recently, I decided to look into him again. And, um, and so... And then also, so there's this, so I knew that part of my cousin George's um, history, his, that's in the, you know, in the, in the records talks about how, you know, he was um, around when the Federal Reserve um, was being, and, and he was also, um, anyway, and also it's interesting, I just found out that he was, so he was, um, I have a hard time remembering all these presidents' names, but um, let's see. Oh, wait, it's on this page. Okay. So he was, um, he was the personal secretary of w William McKinney, who was assassinated. And then, um, which that is what caused the, uh, the, uh, because of that. And then Teddy Roosevelt took over, um, and, you know, and, and, and campaigned on the idea of reform and, you know, um, get, you know, dealing with corruption and things like that. And, um, so anyway, but they decided after the assassination to create the, the secret service, you know, the presidential security, uh, people, um, so the secret service. And then, um, and he was with, in, with Grover Cleveland and William Taft and Theodore Roosevelt. So those are the, the four people he worked with or four. And so, um, all, all four presidents. And then, um, so... Uh, what was I going to say about this? Okay. Oh yeah. And then it talks about how I found something that talked about how Charles, Charles Bonaparte, who was sitting next to, uh, in, on the, in that table, like I was showing y'all. Um, so Charles Bonaparte, uh, was the one that he decided that it was problematic to have the secret service do, do, um, investigations. So he's the one that created the FBI. So that's interesting. So and then, you know, um, like uh, my, my cousin, um, George Cordelieu, he talked, he was the one that, you know, was, was um, uh, you know, speaking out as a, you know, saying, that, yeah, we should have the, you know, the Federal Reserve and we should have central banking. Um, but the thing is, is that during that time, there, I found a, um, an article from uh, NPR, you know, which is part of PBS, you know. Um, so NPR, and they were talking about how um, during that time, you know, just like now, you know, people are smart enough to, to understand that, you know, centralizing things like that and giving too much power to certain people, you know, is, is, is doesn't, is people aren't comfortable with that idea. And uh, they still aren't today, but, you know, we're dealing with global, 
consolidation of power now, where they're going to try to do this central bank digital currency now. So, and we're having all pro kinds of problems with our, you know, their, you know, our, our um, economy, and they're, you know, going to do it like a great reset on the economy and all that. So, you know, it's kind of like a timely thing to talk about, you know. So I thought, well, you know, why not just talk about that because, um, you know, we're going through something very similar right now. On a more global scale, though, it, it, it was already global, though, international banking and stuff. That's when it started. And now they're actually, you know, taking it to the next level right now. So and they're using, you know, um, they're, you know, causing problems in, in with um, banking and certain things, you know, now as you know, for like, you know, the create the problem and then the solution and that kind of thing. So just like they've always done. But um, in my opinion, uh, from what I've learned. And so. Um, so anyway, um, now for the, the so the, the PBS article was talk is talking about how, um, you know, so there's this guy, um, uh, let's see, um, okay, Senator Nelson Aldrich, chairman of the Senate Finance Committee during that time, um, like he it, and and all the big bankers, uh, the the big you know rich banker dudes you know of New York and all that that were, I mean like so J P Morgan was the one that um, like bailed out the United States during that panic of nineteen oh seven, the they had a financial crisis going on and so J P Morgan ba one man bailed them out and so. Um, they're, they were talking about how, like, you know, hey, you know, we can't just rely on one guy to ba bail us out all the time. And so they just, they uh, were talking about, you know, we need to do the Federal Reserve and, and some kind of central banking thing. But people didn't like the idea of central banking. And they knew that that wasn't going to go over well because they already knew how people felt about it. Um, so Senator Aldrich, um, uh, so, you know, he... He wanted, so he decided he was going to get a bunch of the big bankers all together. And, um, and so they, they, um, they all went to this place. They, um, they did a, they secretly, this is the NPR thing. So, um, that guy said he told, so the Aldrich said he told a handful of New York bankers to go on a given night, one by one, to a train station in New Jersey. There they would find a private rail car hitched to the back of a, of a southbound train. To conceal their identities, Aldrich told the bankers to come dressed as duck hunters and to address each other only by, the, by their first name the entire time while they were there too. Um, and they, they, so they spent the next week uh, in a private club at, at a place called Jekyll Island. And this, this is a, a place that had been turned into, you know, been used as a duck hunting it's just some kind of hunting place duck hunting and maybe other things too you know whatever but um so it was um like a rich people's like resort sort of thing i guess and um so they uh says they knew many americans thought a central bank could become too powerful too influential in the economy so they came up with the classic american workaround they decided the u.s should create lots of little central bank little central banks scattered all around the country the plan they came up with still had a long way to go it got shot down the first time in congress the plan for central bank was debated changed significantly and renamed but the basic idea held up and um okay so then President Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into law. Okay. Um, it said, then it goes on at the end of the article, it says, creating the Fed does, didn't solve the nation's economic problems. In fact, a few decades after the Fed was created, its policies made the Great Depression worse. And the Fed changed, uh, and the Fed changed significantly over the course of a century, but even after all those changes, there are still does a dozen set Federal Reserve banks scattered around the country, in cities like Dallas, Richmond, and of course New York. Okay, so then the last thing I want to mention is that I so this there's this this uh, video, like I was starting to get to, and then I kind of changed what I was talking about. Sorry. Um, so I was um, watching this video about. Jekyll Island and 
uh, all the people that were there. And oh, where, what's the, where's the list of, uh, I had the list of the names of the people that were there. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, okay. So, so this, this place, um, it started out as, you know, the, the, the first permanent settlers on the island, um, were British colonists, and they're the ones that that actually took ownership of, of Jekyll Island. Um, but there were some, there were some uh, Indians uh, there called the um, oh, where's that piece of paper? <laughs> uh, where'd I put it? Oh, they called the uh, t uh, oh, here it is. The Tamuka, the Tamuka Indians. Okay who were like unusually tall um, and uh, like eight feet, all of them, including the women. And they had like some kind of like uh, androgynous people there, but I won't get into that right now. Uh, the, the Indians had uh, uh, some androgynous um, members of their tribe. Um, so anyway, um, and that's also, by the way, a, a known thing about the uh, the Nephilim, uh, or the uh, Nephilim actually is the um, the Hebrew pronunciation of that Hebrew word. Actually, I'm I'm trying to change the way I say it. It's the Nephilim, the giants uh, from the bi bi biblical thing. And then there was, you know, I'll go into all this later all about the giants. But for now, just this. And I'm running out of light, so I'll go ahead and finish up. But um, so. Um, in this in this video, and I'll I'll link all this stuff below. Um, so in this video in this video I was watching, it was it was just amazing what it was. There. This guy was talking about, um, and and there's this is a place that people can go go to and and tour. It, it's like a tourist place, and the uh, the club is 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 now a a working hotel. You can actually stay there, so it's very interesting. Um, so. Um, and okay, so the people that were, oh yeah, so the people that, the big banker guys that were there were um, J.P. Morgan, Joseph Pulitzer, William K. Vanderbilt, uh, Marshall Field, uh, and William Rockefeller. Um, so they were the big guys that were there. So Rockefeller, um, there's this, there's this uh, one where, his, okay, so they said that when they built this place, they built each building over what the the um, Tamuka Indians had like so each building that they knocked down of the Tamuka Indians they put on top their own you know like cottage so each of these ones of these rich dudes banker guys built their own cottage on top of an important place what that the the Indians had um, or somebody did. I, I, I can't remember the exact thing, but anyway, they bought it later. I, they weren't the first people to have it, but then they, they like renovated or they did something, but whatever. Who, whoever built the, that stuff there, um, either it was either the French guy that got it after the it, it, English colonizer. I can't remember. There was several people that owned the place, so I, I don't really, I didn't catch exactly who, who built it, but um, Rockefeller's cottage... Um, was built right over a, um, a sacrificial altar um, that the uh, Tamuka Indians had. So it was a, a stone altar that was used to sacrifice. Um, and so the story goes, the guy, that did, he did a tour. He was very much into Native American history. He has some Na Native American blood in, in his family line. And so he, he asked the guy that was working there that was a tour guide about all about it. And, and the guy actually took him into, you know, it was just him. So it was like a private tour. And he got to see about, learn about more things than most people would. And so the guy was telling him all about, like, how... Um, these Tamuka Indians, like that, the the French people that came and landed on that island and met the Tamuka Indians, um, and then they 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 escaped in the middle of the night. They were or they left in the middle of the night. They were like hanging out with them and trying to be you know friendly with them. And then they decided after everything that they saw with the Tamuka Indians, you know, kind of doing, they were so freaked out by it that they that they snuck away at in the middle of the night and. Um, 
he said and then so there was a painting he said that he saw and it's not on the tour he said but you know the guy showed him this other part so he showed him some a, you know a skeleton that was um behind plexiglass in the floor of one of these um cottages that was just you know and then now the the altar he said was not um not see, not seen you can't see it it's just underneath um the cottage and um, you can't, it doesn't have plexiglass so you can see it, but there was a, a big, huge uh, skeleton that was like eight feet, eight feet or so tall of one of the Tamuka Indians because one of the, the, those cottages was built on top of a burial site. Um, but, but also um, the, and, and also the, the Rockefeller cottage was, was also called the, um, the Indian Mound. You know, so because it was built on top of an Indian mound thing, so that's a set. So there's sacrifice. There are mounds. I looked that up too about how. Um, and, and anyways, it, the, you can watch the video. It's fascinating. So, but but I and I did some checking, and it says yeah that that, that this kind of. So the guy was like looking at these artifacts and different things, and he, this guy is really into native native artifacts, and he's also done some research about um, in the Middle East and and things like that. So. Uh, you know, like from, I guess, a biblical perspective, learning about, um, you know, the ancient, the ancients, you know, in the Middle East and, and you know, the kind of, you know, like um, the people that were, um, in, um, you know, uh, worshiping Baal and Moloch and all that kind of stuff, you know, over there and all that. And so, anyway, he, he was saying like, oh, I've never seen... Um, these kind of artifacts, this kind of bow, which is like a double arched bow, and then um, all these weapons and stuff, and then the altar, the stone altar. See, he said, I, you never see that um, in, in Native American stuff. So I'm not, that's weird. Are you sure this is Native American? Are you sure that, that these people didn't, he goes, he said, because he sees that all this kind of stuff only in uh, the, the uh, Middle Eastern um, uh, ancient cultures. So, um, and he said, no, I, you know, think, you know, anyway, so, but anyway, the, it's fascinating. Um, so, and then he, he said that one of the things that he, there was a painting of, which they don't show the public, but there was a painting of w where the Tamuka Indians were actually holding uh, human babies by their ankles and then hacking off their heads and letting the blood drain off on the, on the altar. So they were like, I don't know if they were cannibal or not, or what, if they were eating their own babies, or if they were just so sacrificing them, or what, well, what was going on there, um, but anyway, so Rockefeller had his cottage right on top of that altar, and then, so what, how this ties in with what I was talking about is that that is the, that is the building that it says that that's where the, that's, that's the building that they, that they um, enacted the Federal Reserve, or they did the plans for the Federal Reserve to, so that they could get it passed, they, where all those men came together and made those plans, was in that, that building. <laughs> so they were talking about how, like, wow, there's some kind of, like, occult, um, you know, power or energy to that, and um, that kind of thing. And, and anyway, it's just crazy stuff, and... Um, I, you know, I could go on about it, but I think that's enough. I mean, it's just weird stuff. I mean, that, you know, I mean, we, you know, and then I've heard that some people call this Jekyll Island um, place is because it was for a long time a, oh, oh yeah, where was that? It's, well, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll highlight that or something in, down below in my description thing. But it talks about how people, it came to know this place. I think it was in the NPR um uh, I think it was the NPR article, or maybe it was a different one. But uh, anyway, it, it said that people came to know that er, that place as like the most exclusive. Like you know, you can't go there, and only these rich people, very very exclusive rich people, can go there. And some people have have talked about that. It's they they they've called it the other Bohemian Grove. And there's even like a, a owl totem associated with the uh, uh, these Indians. So, like there's an owl humongous giant owl totem in the bohemian grove thing you know where all these um you know really uh, rockefeller is one of the people that would go to the bohemian grove you know along with a, a lot of other you know um very famous politicians and you know stuff that that are were known to go there 
so um anyways um weird stuff <laughs> i don't know and like you know like like i say the holy spirit it, you know i'm like why do you want me to talk about this kind of stuff you know and he i think it's really he that he mostly from him he, he's saying that he wants me to just trust him and, and grow my faith and trust and and um that you know it's okay for me to do this but anyway so that he's got my back you know and he's protecting me so um anyway so that's it um I know a lot of other people do it too, so I, I imagine he's, they're being protected too. Some people are anyway. Not everyone's protected though when they're talking about this kind of stuff. I mean, so anyway, um, I mean with Jesus, if you're, if you're following Jesus, you can be protected. Uh, if he wants you to do this, I mean, it, you know, I wouldn't do it if, if he wasn't telling me to. Um, because I'd rather not worry about it, really. I'd rather just live a normal life and not talk about these weird stuff, you know. And it's interesting. I would still look at it, but I wouldn't be talking about it. I would just keep it to myself. But anyways, um, thank you for watching. <laughs> so I guess that's it. Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll be back later and talk about some other stuff. I don't know. I'll, I'll try to talk about some normal stuff and some weird stuff. Kind of switch it up. But anyway, um, Anyway, thank you so much. Um, love you all, and I'm praying for every one of you that, and, and everyone, you know, to please, please, you know, if you don't know Jesus, you know, give him a chance and, um, you know, just seek him earnestly and um, be willing to, you know, repent of your sins and humble yourself and, um, and, and devote your life to him, and you'll be so glad you did. And um, so, anyway, um, thank you. I love you all. Bye.